So let's talk about DACDB. And uh, first of all, we're going to talk about really the major functions. The major functions in DACDB, uh, and for those of you who've used it, this is going to be uh, a little redundant, but we were not. We're going to go over this pretty quickly. Uh, so, so basically, DACDB gives you real-time information uh, about your club, your members, and does something really important, and that is interfaces the DACDB database with the Rotary International database uh, using the Direct Connect tool. And I'm going to show you how to make sure your club is using that feature. And if it's not, uh, we're going to show you how to uh, set that up. But it's critically important, even more so today, because a couple, about a year and a half ago, Rotary changed the way they bill clubs for the Rotary dues and all the fees that you pay per member. And it, what they do is they take the information in their database, as it is, at the end of December and at the end of June, and they send you an invoice. Back in the old days, if you were a secretary years ago, you know you got this long list of members, and you could add and remove members that were not accurate in the RI database. That is no longer the case. They send you an invoice, you pay it, whether it's right or wrong. Having this Direct Connect tool is going to make sure that the, inv and using it properly, in other words, maintaining your database, your membership database, accurately and in a timely manner in DACDB and having the Direct Connect tool set up, which is only a two-step process if you haven't done that, will ensure that the RI database is in sync with the actual number of members you have and that invoice you get twice a year will be current and accurate and you won't be paying for members who've left your club and um, that's very important. For those of you who've served on committees or have chaired committees, creating your committees and populating those with your members is a great tool uh, to use in DACDB. But even more than that, you can structure those committees and subcommittees within the system to really give you a, a, a nice visual uh, look at how your committees are set up. You can then use those committee systems to send p-mails or personalized emails as well as text messages to your committee members. One of the committees I always recommend a, a club set up is your board of directors and because that's a, that's a group of people you're going to be communicating with on a regular basis, setting uh, the board committee, your membership committee, your foundation committee, your service committees, if you have a fundraiser, a committee for that. Those committees uh, allow you to um, easily communicate and manage uh, those lists of people, plus each committee has within it the ability to store documents for that committee. And you think, well, that's okay, I've got them on my computer. But in two or three years, when that committee is doing its work, to be able to go back two or three years and find the documents, the minutes, whatever information was created uh, by the committee in the past is a wonderful tool, and DACDB gives you that ability to do that. And so the committee system in DACDB is very powerful, and I hope you'll uh, think about using that. Reports, 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 reports. <laughs> you can generate uh, uh, reports of so many kinds, it's almost over, uh, overwhelming. Uh, and if the report format that you're looking for is not there, you can actually do what they call a DIY, do-it-yourself report, where you pick the fields, export it to Excel, and then you can do anything you want. So there's, there's just so many things you can do with the data as long as your information is up to date and current in DACDB. The event calendar, just like you, just like this event, you've noticed that on the calendar you will see club events, district events, even zone events. If you look at the calendar today, you will even see uh, a, a, an upcoming webinar that DACDB is putting on about the grants module, and I think it's the 23rd. We'll look at that here in a minute. Um, so the calendar is has a great deal of power, and as you have seen, because many, all of, most of you registered online for this meeting, in addition to the calendar, um, you can put online registration forms on an event, 
and uh, allow people to sign up, either members of the club or you can even use it outside of your club for lots of creative uses. And we can talk a little bit more about that if you're interested. And then, of course, the club calendar. Uh, it, when Nancy schedules all of her visits to your clubs, those will automatically be put onto the district calendar, but they will also automatically be put onto your club calendar. And so you'll know, uh, of course, she'll, she'll probably, Nancy, I assume you're going to be doing that list uh, uh, here soon um, and, and presenting your list of official club visits to the clubs, but they will be on your calendar once they've been added to the uh, district calendar. Yeah, I'm actually waiting until after pets because I want any feedback from the club presidents of anything in particular that they will want me to attend before I finalize my schedule. Very good. Many of you mentioned communication. Uh, obviously, in your role as club president, communication is critical. And, so, and, and I've mentioned most of them. DACDB's P-mail or personalized email. Now that we can also, we can use DACDB to send text messages to an individual, to a committee, to a group, uh, or to the entire club. The caveat is uh, in each member's profile, you've got to know their cell phone carrier. And we'll touch on that and I'll show you where that information uh, is entered. But I know my club president made sure that she got the got that information for all of her board members. So in our in our club's board committee, all of um, all of those members who are on the board, we've made sure that we've got their cell carrier and their text and their cell phone number, and then she can send text messages right from DACDB. And a cool new feature, and we're going to talk about it here in a minute, is um, the mobile DACDB site has now added p-mail and p-text to that so you don't even have to get to a computer as long as you've got your cell phone with you um, you can use uh, some of those tools in addition to p-mail and p-text uh, we're going to visit we're going to talk shortly about stories and the easy bulletin and, and i'll show you how our club uses those and a number of other clubs are using that as well and it's a very very powerful way to communicate and as I mentioned, stories, the, the story system allows you to create content that can be used in many different ways. It can appear on the home screen of DACDB. It can appear on your DACDB hosted website. It can appear in an easy bulletin. And you choose where that information appears, and you can determine how long it will appear in any of those uh, places. Uh, and it allows you to create content one time and use it in lots of different ways. You can set that up so that any member of your club can, can create a story, but then you give your story editor the ability to review, maybe edit, and decide what information is actually going to be published out to the club. So while club members might be able to create content, they can't actually push it out to the club until someone with the authority has reviewed it and, uh, and approved it to be published. The Easy Bulletin is a way to create a newsletter very easily, a really nice looking newsletter that is that can be sent out by uh, P-mail, uh, it can be viewed on um, uh, as a web page and a link to that and then the system automatically creates a PDF archive copy of your newsletter so it's just a, a fast and efficient way to create a club bulletin and um, leverages the content you've created in stories really effectively many templates are already created or you can create your own we're also going to talk about the mobile site, and as I just said, recently they've added both P-mail and P-text to the mobile uh, DACDB site, and so we're going to show you uh, how to get to that if you're not already using it. But it's a really powerful tool. Basically, it brings a lot of the functions of DACDB uh, onto your smartphone. Also, um, kind of a cool tool is a district map tool that shows you, uh, brings up basically a Google map with every club and if you click on the little uh, pointer it'll bring up the information about that club. Everything I've shown you up to this point is available to you today at no additional cost 
to the club. The district pays for DACTV and makes everything that I've just described to you and a lot more available uh, to all the clubs uh, at no charge. There are three premium features that a club can subscribe to and you pay this directly to uh, DACDB. Uh, the first one is a weekly attendance module. This system does all the hard work of maintaining and reporting your uh, meeting attendance, including collecting what they call banked makeups, then applying those makeups to missed meetings, which is something that uh, your attendance secretary or your club secretary would do. For a large club, there's even a way to use a barcode uh, system to uh, check people in each week. You can use that system either online, in other words, connected to the internet at your meeting, or uh, you, there's actually, actually a way to use that offline if you don't have internet access where your club meets. And uh, also, you can record uh, attendance on the mobile DACDB app if you subscribe to the weekly attendance module. It does all the work with excused absences. So let's say someone is going to take a leave of absence for three months. You put in the beginning and ending date of that leave. And, and so automatically, and this is a board approved leave, automatically each week that your club meets during that period, that member who's on leave is treated differently in the attendance calculation because now if a board um, if the board approves a leave of absence that person's absence does not count against your club's attendance record and the system does all of that for you uh, allows you to enter your guests it also does meal tracking so if you have maybe members who charge guest meals and you're using the dues and finance system, then it will automatically in the next invoice bill them for those charged meals for guests or however you do your, your, uh, uh, your meals. Uh, and it also handles the Rule of 85 calculations correctly. For those of you who don't know what the Rule of 85 is, Rule of 85 is a way for a member to be excused from meetings and recent, oh, about, uh, I guess, six years ago, they changed the calculation so that if a Rule of 85 member attends, they count toward your, member, your attendance calculation, but if they do not attend, then it doesn't hurt. They don't char they are, they're not treated as absent. So it's kind of a, kind of a weird, comp uh, weird calculation. But to qualify for Rule of 85, the, you take the member's age, and the total number of years that that member has been in all Rotary Clubs, not just the current Rotary Club, but all previous Rotary Clubs, if that number is 85 or greater, that member can request from the Board of Directors to be excused from the attendance requirement, and then their membership type is changed from active to active Rule of 85, and then the attendance system treats them differently. So. Um, if, if they miss a meeting, it doesn't hurt. Doesn't, in other words, they're not in the numerator or the denominator of that, of that calculation. If they are there, then they do count toward that. So it's kind of a, you get, to, you, you, you get your cake and you get to eat it too uh, for a member who qualifies for Rule of 85. Subclubs also treat them differently in, in dues or prepaid meals. There's lots, but those are, those are club decisions. That has nothing to do with what RI says. As far as RI is concerned, they're an active member and they pay the full dues to RI. But the main thing is uh, for a club, they impact the, um, the attendance calculation. Um, I mentioned the dues and finance system uh, module. This is uh, the second uh, premium module. This system is a really, uh, it's basically a complete accounting system, dues, billing, uh, accounts receivable uh, a system. So in very easily you can create member uh, invoices. You can also set up your own custom chart of accounts, um, set up budgets, all of those things and create your club's balance sheets and P&Ls, and it'll basically do uh, accounting. It, it's, it's not QuickBooks, but it, um, it will do the accounting 
uh, for a club if you want to use that module. Some clubs only use it just to create invoices, um, which it does well. When you create those invoices, you have the option of emailing the invoice to a member. <clears throat> and if you set up a way for members to pay online through a merchant account or through even PayPal, then the when the member gets that that email with their uh, invoice attached, there's actually a link they click and they can literally pay their dues online with a credit card. Our club's been using that for a number of years and our members really, really love it. The third premium module is a club website. A number of clubs in our district are using this. They recently upgraded that entire system. So these are responsive sites, which mean they work on any size screens. If you're looking at the website on a regular computer screen, they look great. If you're looking at them on your smartphone, they look great as well. The beauty of these is they completely integrate data from uh, DACDB into the website. So a lot of the content that you would normally have to update each year with your new officers, with calendars, uh, or you know, things you might even update every week with your upcoming programs, all that information is fed right out of DACDB and it's always current. And you can incorporate those stories that we were talking about earlier into uh, the website so your content is constantly being updated, which improves your uh, rankings in the search engines. So if somebody searches on your Rotary Club, that constantly updating content uh, will push you up in the search uh, engines and make your site a lot more usable and findable. That's not a word, but anyway, you know what I mean. Well, you should be asking me about the cost. If you'll go to dacdb.com, and um, here's where you can find all about the websites. Here you can find about the premium modules, and here's the information about pricing. And the pricing is based on the number of members in your club. So for the clubs with less than 30 members, uh, this, is the, uh, this is the pricing, and this is per year, and it's billed on an annual basis. You can bundle. Uh, so if you buy the individual modules, they are priced as such. You can see that there's a significant uh, discount if you buy the, all three modules, but if you don't want all three, then you can just pick and choose which two and bundle them the way you want. There's a phone number up here to call to get more information. And the beauty of the premium modules is you get uh, support directly from DACDB. And they've got specialists for each of these modules who will help you and support you and, and work you through getting them set up. The lady who works on the dues in the county will actually do a go-to-meeting kind of like this and will literally walk you through and set up your chart of accounts and get you started and teach you how to use the dues module. So you get a lot of support uh, when you go to the premium modules. So that's where you'd find out about that. How many of you are using the, have got the, the mobile DACDB site set up on your smartphone? This is Sherry, I do. Good. It's very useful. Good. It is a, uh, it, it really is an amazing tool. So all you have to do is open up the, on an iPhone, it's Safari, on an Android phone, it would be uh, Chrome, and just type in m.dacdb.com, no www. Or you can just type in dacdb.mobi, either one will bring you up to um, the login screen. And the login, you use the same credentials that you use for the desktop app. So your login name, uh, if you haven't changed it by default, it would be the email address that was set up when your account was set up. Uh, your password, if you haven't changed it, you uh, it'll be your RI. Uh, membership ID number and your club number. <clears throat> uh, I recommend you go ahead and enter that, but to be honest, the only time that's required is if you are an assistant governor or higher, 
in other words, a level five or higher. Um, if if an assistant governor, I get this call frequently, a new assistant governor will log, governor will log in and not put that in, and they'll they will go in as a level one, and they don't have access to all the things they need to have access to. But up through a level four, you don't. It's not required, but I do recommend you use that. If your phone already has some security on it, so that somebody can't just walk up and use your phone, and I'm sure you have that passcode or something that you use, um, then you feel free to check the uh, remember me box and then click the login box. And that will allow you, that'll bring up a screen that looks kind of like this. You click the find a member, you can search the database uh, for members, information about my club, your district, and all of this information is available to you uh, right here. Uh, on the mobile app. For those of you who have not logged in to uh, DACTB and don't have it bookmarked, we're going to show you how to do that. But you can easily get to DACTB with this uh, URL right here, dactb.com forward slash rotary, and that'll bring you up to this uh, login screen. There again, same information as, on, as we just showed you on the mobile device, your username, your password, and your club number. If this is your computer and you've got control of it, it's password secured, but if it's a shared computer, do not check that Remember Me. To learn more about uh, DACDB, including, I mean the mobile site, and including how to create a desktop icon on your mobile phone so that you can quickly bring up the mobile site anytime and anywhere, there's instructions here on how to do that down here on the bottom right hand side of the login screen. One other thing, if you'll see this uh, yellow, it's, it's highlighted in yellow, it's not on the, uh, not on your screen, create DACDB shortcut. If you will drag that, just click, left click on that and drag it to your desktop and drop it there, it will create a shortcut right to this uh, login screen. And there again, as club president, you're going to be in DACDB all the time. So if you haven't done that, I highly recommend you just grabbing that, dragging it to your desktop, drop it there, and that will create a shortcut on your desktop to get right to DACDB. You're going to spend most of your time on the My Club screen. This is where 99% of, uh, of what you need to do or want to do uh, will be done. One of the things that a lot of people don't realize is you'll notice that this grid of members down here may look different from the way your club looks. You know, you may not have uh, all of these columns. If you click this gear wheel icon up here, you can customize the screen for uh, just your experience in DACDB, or you can make it the default for your entire club. So I highly recommend you to uh, look at um, the options that you can uh, select. Uh, I find this to be a nice layout because if you just bring up this list and you need to call somebody, you've got their information, um, or you need to send a quick email, you've got that information, excuse me, right there. The the fairly uh, the new uh, layout for, DAC, for DACDB includes this left-hand uh, navigation menu, and we're going to talk uh, a little bit more about each of these uh, later. But I, just the main thing is I want you to explore all of the information and all of the tools that are available to you on this left-hand navigation menu. This information is important, but it's also extremely useful to you in your role as club president. When you click on the My Data tab, you will find some really uh, important information, and this is one of the first things you'll want to do, and something that you're going to want to probably show your members. When you click on the My Data tab, there are a number of things here you can do, but uh, any member can easily click this member directory link and create their own photo member directory. This members doc is a short user guide for your members that they would use to learn how to edit their own information, change their username and password, print a membership directory, and uh, every member should know basically that information. So that little, it's a short little document, you can download it as a PDF or you can send it to your members, but I highly recommend you considering doing that because it's just a great 
a really short guide to to uh, get your members used to using DACTV. And then to edit your own inf inf information, you've got the edit member link over here on the left. When you click the edit link, then basically the information about each member is uh, can be found under each of these tabs. And so you've got your basic member information, then you can upload member photos, all the contact information, family information, business information, very important that the business information be kept uh, up to date and all this information. So spend some time exploring all of these. Be sure to hit the yellow update button over here to actually save any changes you think. There again, this is that link right here, that create shortcut, dragging that to your desktop. Very important step you're going to want to do. Let's just kind of walk through everything that's here very quickly. Make sure that everybody's kind of comfortable with uh, all the things we can do in DACDB. So when you first log in, you're on the home screen, this information will uh, will vary. These are stories that the district's newsletter editor has created and coded to publish on the uh, DACDB home screen. So these are stories that probably also appeared in a newsletter. So that's an, uh, that's an example of how stories will appear. This is a story up here that's what was created by DACDB about the next DACDB user uh, group conference. Stories can appear from lots of different sources. And then as you scroll down, if there are no stories, then you start here. And if you ever wondered about who, what the security levels mean and who can do what, you can scroll down here and you can see what all the security levels are. Uh, you're, you would be a level four. Here's what you can do. Here's what your assistant governor can do. Here's what Nancy can do as a district officer. And your members are typically at level one unless they're a committee chair, and then they can do a little bit more. So that's what that's what is explained right here. The next thing I want to cover is the help and support resources available uh, in DACDB. If you will click on the help tab on the top menu bar, you will find a, a tremendous amount of support and help. Plus, you'll find all of the online documentation uh, for a DACDB. Starting up here in the top, there's uh, some frequently asked questions. So this is always a great place to uh, begin uh, to look for common problems. The search field is a great place to start. You can type a word or a phrase and all the information related to your search will uh, pop up. There's a link to the quick start guide which is a wonderful user guide primarily targeted to club leaders but anyone can benefit from the information in this document and it is available on the helps tab. DACTV University is a place where the recordings of all of the live webinars that DACTV holds can be uh, found and reviewed. There are also uh, video tutorials that have been created. All of the training options available to you from online help as well as live uh, web-based training and even on-site training. Under help topics you have uh, a basically a complete user manual very detailed on all of the features uh, within DACDB. In addition, you will find uh, email addresses for getting uh, your support questions answered. If you're interested in websites, here's an email address to start that conversation. And here are uh, the telephone number with the major extensions of how to reach support, billing and invoices, as well as um, sales and marketing. The dashboards can be really powerful. They allow you to see at a glance what's going on with your club. So here's a chart of attendance. Here's a membership chart. So you can see at a glance what's going on with uh, your club. And you can change the period of time that each of these charts displays. Over here on the right, 
you can see information about terminated members, uh, birthdays, new members, club anniversaries, upcoming events, and then you've actually got some uh, bar charts showing you uh, member age, gender, and membership type. So there's just a, a nice little quick view of your club under the club dash under the district dashboard. It's the same thing, but it's at the district level. And district stats. This one's kind of interesting. A lot of information here. Uh, club size, net member change, which members are, which clubs are growing, which are shrinking. Who's reporting attendance? Email compliance. This means how many members have email addresses in each of the clubs. So we're getting we're getting pretty good there. And then here's even one that shows how many members have a photo in their profile. Next, if you click on clubs, you'll see a listing of all of the clubs in the district. You can sort by simply clicking on the uh, header. If you're curious about what your club number is, it's right there. If uh, you want, if you're not sure what AG area you're in, it's right there. And for those of you who are on here and you're wondering what your RI Direct Connect status is, that is shown right here in this column. And here's the current member size, number of members in the club, and Here's each club's charter date. If you didn't know when your club was chartered, that information's right there. I mentioned the map of clubs. So you can click on a club and you can see where it meets, all that kind of good stuff. So there's your, there are all the clubs in our district. Click on my club. I mentioned the gear wheel. You can determine uh, which officers show up here on the top and what information is displayed in the grid by simply dragging and dropping these fields. So if we don't want the Paul Harris Fellow status, we can just drop it back or we can put it back up there. And then we can set it for my configuration or we can set it for the club default using these buttons down here. Over here on the left-hand side, Lots of information. I'm not going to click on all these. You can do that. Um, but you can easily see uh, all of the committees and you can just, uh, there's just so much information. One thing that you might want to uh, notice here is that member types are broken out by category. So in, in our club, when a member is proposed, we put them in our database so that we don't lose track of them. Once they become a member, we simply go in and edit that member and change their member type from proposed, proposed to active. And then that that does everything. That sends that notice to RI um, and continues processing them and they just become a member of your club. You don't have to do anything else. RI gets that information automatically. So that's a very uh, that's just a handy way. Plus, we want them to start getting our newsletter and all that kind of stuff, so they get that. If you want to go back and look at your terminated members, then you can click on that link and you can see a list, a list of all your terminated members. Lots of uh, lots of tools there. Of course, we talked about my data. So, if you want to make sure that you have the uh, cell phone carrier for your members, you edit the member, click on the contact, and the member themselves can do this. Click on the contact tab and then here's all the contact information for this member and there's this drop down with all of the cell phone carriers in the world listed. Pick yours, update it, and now this member can receive p-text through DACDB. That's all that's required and I'll of course make sure you update it. Let me show you, because we don't, we're not going to have time to do a complete demonstration of how you do the Easy Bulletin. We're actually going to schedule a, a workshop. The, the Bulletin Editor my club has offered to teach a, a webinar on how uh, she uses Easy Stories and the, the Story Module and the Easy Bulletin to create our club's bulletin. But let me just show you an example of one. All right, so when our newsletter appears in my inbox, this is what it looks like. And each of these stories, each of these items is a story that was created. You can embed video, you can do all kinds of stuff.
And so all this information on the left-hand side has come right out of the DACDB database, the events, and we include member birthdays. And so all of these stories are here. Now, this content comes from lots of different places. Some of it comes from RI, some of it comes from members who've who are assigned each week a member is assigned to record what people say you know when, when people give good news uh, a member is responsible for writing that down and then they create a story and then our bulletin editor uh, includes it this is what the bulletin uh, looks uh, looks like when it comes into uh, the inbox you can also if you can't see it with your email client, you can also click on that link and just see it as a web page. So that's a typical easy bulletin newsletter. Just doesn't take that long to create it. I mentioned the um, website. This is a um, DACDB hosted website. What you will see is, there again, um, this content is mostly coming from DACDB. So as our officers change, this information is automatically updated. The speakers comes right out of the calendar. The content here in the middle comes from, this is a story that just is always there and our president can update it anytime she wants. But then we have a section here for programs. So uh, the stories dealing with the next week's program or uh, a future program or even a past program because uh, we do have a summary of each past program. And then the, uh, any other news that we either glean from Rotary or from some other thing that we think our members would be interested in, there again, we can actually embed videos. There's a little time-lapse video that was created when we, um, from our sports show that uh, uh, showed the guys putting together the um, trout tank. I know that doesn't show very well on GoToMeeting, so I won't spend a lot of time with that. So lots of powerful things you can do with a really easy to create website. And of course we have all kinds of links and stuff here. And there again, it's just it's real easy, cut and paste. It's a template-based website. You don't have to be a programmer to, to use it.